Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, this is part two of my visit to the Village Antiques Market in Weedon in Northamptonshire. Yep, and the bargains keep coming. Um, well, I'm not buying any in this one. And um, yeah, I find out mistakes have been made. I don't always get it right. Luckily, nobody dies in this business. Yeah, and it was, but anyway, I will make a confession to something, something I thought was simple, turns out to be much more complicated, as usual, you know how it goes, and um, so, anyway, with that said, let's get on with the film. These are not looking too exciting, um, there's one there, little, little cup there, or tumbler I should say, it's got a date on it, 1890. Two, but it's not it's not interesting enough to help you date something else um, the prices are very cheap I mean you've got like a pair of um, custard glasses there for four quid so a set of six glasses for six so yeah the prices are you know this is here to to be moved so yeah the prices are very good got some cranberry bowls down here this is the next level down from here um, yeah, and I said prices are a bit moved. There's something funny about cranberry. Says something funny about cranberry bowls like this in um, the 20th century British glass book, and it says basically people were making it in their gardens. This one here though stands out because it's got this thread, glass white glass thread on it. That you need a special machine to make that. So that's quite a nice thing, and. Oh, it says AF, so it's four pounds. So this book is British Glass, 1800 to 1914 by Charles Heidemack. And yeah, so this is the bit that I was alluding to when I was talking earlier. And um, it says many of the talk, many of the, we'll oh, say light shining on it, sorry. Many of the trinkets normally cannot be attributed to any specific factory surviving, but a surviving pattern book from Smart Birds of the round oak glass work shows a variety of small that a small company could produce colored plate blah 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 so over the page i'll show you in a second another important market for the lesser known firms was production lampshades on a smaller scale again were the backyard cribs who which melted color in cannon pots um measuring up to 36 inches so yeah people were making in starbridge they were making glass in there uh, and fired by coke yeah so yeah people were making glass in their backyards and that's why you're never going to id everything okay um and i'll show you i mean there's a bit of cranberry here but if you look at the cranberry over here so this is from the Smart Brothers play. It's similar to what we were looking at with the little frills sticking out. But the thing is, lots of people were doing it. And some of it was happening in people's backyards. So, um, and yeah, the quality of that didn't look, of two of the pieces there didn't look fantastic. One of them with the pulled pieces that there's some lampshades that they did as well. Um, so yeah. So I don't think we're going to... When you see these bits with the frilly bits on, some I have seen the odd piece, which I think, oh, it might be this, or it might be one of these. But, um, yeah, your your chances of IDing some of it is very low. I'd need more pages of this. Um, and even then, this is a small company... If other people were producing, I don't know what proportion of what was produced was theirs even. So, yeah. Anyway, so you've seen it now. Um, what's the period they put on this? Late 19th century. So there you go. A bit more here. Nice little. This is post. This is probably 1880s plus. Um, this little jug here, because of the way the handle is, you can see it's attached from bottom to top and you've got this weird thing here look at that i don't recognize that at all it's 
cased in white. Yeah, that is weird, 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 weird. I have no idea. I'm not even going to try to look it up. These are French, possibly Baccarat. I saw something in one of the books showing they had a peach blush, but the same style here. Um, it's Baccarat. I might try and look those up. This book is The Decanter, Ancient to Modern. And yeah, this is the bottle we were looking at. Only this one is in, I think it's called Amberina. Yes. Um, I think that's right. Is it Amberina? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, it is. Sorry. And um, so, this is the bottle. It's Baccarat. And the date that is given for this bottle is 1880. Now... That's probably a start date, okay, so it's probably made it later, but the convention is is that you give the start date. So 1880 it is. Also on the same shelf here is these little is that a frosted base. No, it's a frosted base, but look at these. So this um Frosting star cake or was invented in about 1851, 1850s, something like that, by Richardson's. It's very popular for about 20 years or so. So that gives you a nice early Victorian date for these little dolls here. The others, yeah, that, 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 that's very plain looking. That's quite fancy, but I don't recognise it at all. Couple of 1930s press glass jugs. I think these are both Sauby. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what this pattern's called. This one's called Oxford. Yeah. And they're three pounds each. As I said, a lot of the prices in here are very keen. They're, they're here to sell things. This is the Sauber catalogue that I've downloaded from the Victorian Press Glass dot um, com website, and the name of the jug that I didn't know the name of is Berkeley Berkeley Sweet Barkley Barkley Berkeley. Anyway, Barkley Sweet. I'll go with Barkley. This is it. It doesn't appear in the earlier. I've got a 1933 catalogue that I've downloaded from the 20th Century Glass website and it's not in there so this is the first appearance of this sweet really because it's a sweet there's different things with it from the tableware kind of these are all kind of kind of arty juggy kind of things but this is pure tableware um there's only oh no there's more is there more no no so but yeah, this is what you get. There's no cream jug and sugar bowl and stuff, which I would have expected. But anyway, moving on. If I scroll down a bit further, we'll get to the Oxford Suite. Here we are. This is the jug we were looking at. Um, the Oxford Suite does appear in a 1933 catalogue, but there is no water set so this set is not with it other bits the cream jug and butter dish and cream bowl they're all there but this is not so banana split i've never seen that i didn't even notice that sorry i'm completely distracted now but anyway you can see it comes in different colors flint blue amber green and rosalyn which is a pinky color i think um so here it is the oxford sweet i I have a feeling it's copied from an American one. I'm not certain though. And it's and it's a bit in the vein of um Davidson's Jacobean. So it might have been created to rival that a bit because it has that little panel look about it. Anyway, there you go. That's what those jugs and the three pounds price is okay. That is the cheapest I've ever seen those jugs. Um I've never seen them in a charity shop because although they're out and about, they're not super common. Well, they're, they're relatively common, but not 
everywhere like the Romanian fish or anything but three pounds is the cheapest I that's charity shop prices so yeah real bargains to be had at um, the Weedon village antiques market get that right a couple of decanters here this one looks very kind of Edwardian looking this one's out of a tantalus um, it's 20 pounds it's in good nick I think there's a tiny little chip on the other side there but apart from that it looks in very good and it's a quality one because the cutting is all the way down to the base less quality ones the cutting stops here because that's where the box comes to but they've not done that here um, yeah so that's really quite a nice one for and 20 pounds is a good price for them because it really adds to the value of the box if you can make a complete set of decanters in it nice <laughs> decanter here um, not sure looks very mid-century might I don't think it's Stuart yeah I don't know and then um, over here look I was saying earlier a whole bunch of tantalus decanters and different qualities because you can see clear base clear base and also you've got this one here which is cut all the way down but it's not as um, tightly cut as the one we were looking at I'd love to know who made these claret jugs because I do see them around they're post 1800s I suspect these are early 20th century because I see this pattern here um, you know I've probably seen about four or five of this with this exact pattern this year so I don't think they're Victorian Got that video. pair of little glass baskets here these are Romanian oh they've got a Mara everybody puts Murano on they're Romanian they're from the Padura Niagara factory um, which closed in 1996 so they are vintage um, but they're probably from the 70s so usually have this little blue on top and then they have this pulled base like this so they both have it um, yeah they're quite nice ones yes we're back with the all origin um, article on a glass fish on top of the TV set and um, yeah so this is about the Padura Niagara um, glass factory that closed in 1996 if I scroll down to the right bit, ooh, there we go. Here are your baskets. You can see have the same features for the same pulled feet in clear. Handles like this. Little divvy bit on top. And they always have this sort of like loop up around the handles, a loop in here, and then loop back. That's it's pretty standard. I've seen some things that are not quite the same, and I kind of go, ooh, because a lot of them look like this. Um, anyway we know they closed in 1996 that makes everything at least vintage um, but they were doing these kind of works in the 70s so uh, what they made in between i don't know um, or whether they carried on making the same thing the whole time i don't know maybe i'll find out another time but anyway that's definitely romanian this if you like deco this is about as deco they said it's french it looks very french so i wouldn't fight that but i don't know who that is by but it is quite cool is it yeah the rim is all good so yeah and it's big you know it's not look at how big much bigger than the other thing also just point this out here yeah that little symbol there or label I should say that means that's Polish so yeah and they've said contemporary art glass which is what it will be I did try to find the um, the French vase so I did find these here which are the same ones and um, this is they but I think they know as much as I do because they're just saying French. So I didn't look underneath, so it might have been marked. Well, these are not saying they're marked, are they? 
No, they would have shown the mark. If it was marked French, I'm sure they would have shown us it. So I don't think they're marked. Um, oh, the price. 280 pounds. Whoosh. So if I go back to um, the hunt, there is this one here, which looks, has a similar look to it. Some sort of geometric style a bit, color, overall form. And I have been able to pin that down. And that's not French, that's jobbling. Yeah. But I haven't been able to pin down the other one other than that thing there. There's a book called Collector's Guide to Jobbling, blah, blah, blah. Um, only it's £60, so I don't have that book. I didn't even know it existed. Um, if there was a single one that was cheap, I would have bought it now. But unfortunately, I didn't find that one. So anyway, my conclusion is, yeah, it might be French. It might not be. It might be Jobbling or some other maker because this is close enough to be out of the same stable but I don't know really the profile of the lip is different the other one was a bit more angular there's another vase that's definitely French which is rounded so yeah it's all yeah I don't know got a whole bunch of um, bits and pieces here a couple of Medina vases there. You can't use that. Can't just get one flower on the top of that one. Got white fries, nine oh nine nine. Um, it's sea green. Um, another Medina thing. I don't know the the paperweights. They're just not my thing. Any that I know, recognise, think of. This one's different. This one's not actually a paperweight. This one's a candlestick or a candle holder. Can you see with the hole in the top? We're looking at the whitefriesglassworks.com website from 19... and um, looking at the catalogue from 1954. Now, we saw the little um, sea green 9099 bowl. It was... It would be this little one here, the tiny one, four inches. So, I have previously been telling the people these are from the 1950s. These are so this is the earliest I've seen it up until this point because it doesn't appear in the 1950 catalogue, and it doesn't appear in the 1949 catalogues. I presume that's it. This must be the beginning, 1954. So I keep thinking, yeah, 1959. So someone kindly pointed out to me because I'd seen something on Facebook and I said, oh yeah, 1950s. And he went, no, 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 30s. And I was like, what, 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 what? Anyway, so yeah, I was very wrong. Let me show you. Bum, bum, bum. So if you go to 1940, here is the 9099. At this point, it's got a little notch cut into it. Okay. And the sizes are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inches. The one we saw was a little 4 inch one. So it's got to be post. Well, at this point, I'm saying it's got to be, And it doesn't have a notch in it, okay? So because it's an ashtray. Yeah, so this is to put your, your cigarette or whatever. Or if it's a big notch your cigar anyway so oh that it was a 9064 there's another so there's a 9064 that's like a 9099 but they've said give it a different number yeah i didn't spot that either god i'm a dummy anyway if you go back another year it doesn't appear in 1931 woohoo look The 9099 here does not have a notch in it, but it only comes in sizes 8 and 10 inches. And then they do have the 9064 with 4 inches with, with a notch. 
So if you see a little tiny one and it doesn't have a notch in it, it's post-war. If it if it's eight or ten inches, it's potentially pre-war. Um, or if it, if it's that size and it has a notch, then it has a it's pre-war. Yes, it's really you know make a sim simple story. 1950s more complicated by putting notches in it and making different sizes and giving them different numbers and stuff just there's never ending complications to this business they usually have quite a few books and antique books about antiques and catalogues in here and I've bought several from here because they're usually very cheap. I just thought, check out what's here usually. I'm not sure any of these are jumping out at me. So, yeah. Got a few bits here. Got a little, that's Medina. I can see, I'm having to look at the camera from above. Um, that's Medina as well. Oh, it's got the label on it still. There you go. Caithness. This is Caithness. Um, and another Medina one. I've not seen that before. With the label on it. I wouldn't have known it was Medina if it didn't have the label on it. Yeah. I've not seen that before ever. I don't know that thing at the back. What's this? Yeah. Don't know this either. A few more bits here. There's a, I would have thought that was a Medina, but it's still from Malta. Um, Metapha, um, which is one of the other makers you see a lot of glass from. I don't recognize anything else in here. It's all little bits. This looks very Vict Victorian. The squirrel in the back is quite cute. Let's go down another level. There's some more bits in here. And again, it's all paperweights. My blind spot. A bit of the little files at the back. That one there. That looks like it's Alan Bay or somebody like that. Or T. Tyne. Tyne Valley. Um, Tyne Valley glass. Actually, I think it's Time Valley, um, but yeah. So um, now that I've looked, okay, at the video that I was looking, I could see the word Tyne, Tyne on that on that little vase, which is Tyne Valley, Tyne Valley glass. So this is them. They do a lot of really nice art glass, very different. I don't know their stuff that well, but they seem to be out on a limb away from other people. They even do these um, bowls like this. These I don't know what you call them, stretch bowls, oval bowls, I don't know. But even theirs that they do are not like anybody else's because they're, they've got different tones in them. So, yeah. Um, this is the kind of glass we're looking at. This, I'm sure there'll be... That's a bit like it. Let's see if we can find, 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 find. I did actually find their website as well. I'll show you that in a second. I was a bit worried. It took me a while to find it. I thought, oh no, they've got out of business. Here we go, look at this, here we go. Look at that. Dun, dun, dun. So this is, this one here in particular is like, it's the same texture as um, what we were just looking at. I don't know if there's any more of it, because it's not, I think it's one of their older patterns. I don't think they do it anymore. I have looked at them. I think I think there was a bowl back in, when I did Vintage Retread earlier this year, and there was a bowl from them, and that's when I first found them. A little symbol there. Yeah, there's just that. But anyway, if we go and have a look at their website and find them, this is them. And look at their glass. It's just, look at this. Isn't it cool? 
I don't think it's cheap though. Let's have a look. If I remember rightly, I've not looked yet. Prices are shown on landing pre on are shown land prices are shown prices are shown landing prices. What does that mean? Where's the prices? Go back, go back. Are there prices anywhere? If I hit shop. Shop page. Try this one. No, it won't be cheap. I can tell you now. Um, I suspect you're paying at least probably a couple of hundred. But look how nice that is. Where does that expand? Or just as that? I don't know what's going on with this website. I can't figure it out. It says prices showing up, landing prices. I don't even know how to get them to work. Yeah. Anyway, so that was very well planned on my part. Uh, but anyway, the, their glasses is lovely. Um, it is cool stuff and they're still going, and that's what I like to see. Right down the bottom now, getting on the floor. And there's this here. They've got Murano question mark. The colours look right for Murano. Um, I'll see, see if I can find that in the 20th Century Glass website. It's quite a cool looking thing. So I had a really good go at finding that bowl. I've been through literally every piece of Murano in the 20th Century Glass website and had no luck. And I just thought sometimes you can just throw something at the wall and see what comes up. I typed in amber green glass bowl and yeah, nothing came up. But the only thing it tells me is maybe my brain was thinking right. A lot of the amber green bowls that are here are Murano or people are saying they're Murano so other people think the same as me you know Murano 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 not that one Murano oh that one says Scandinavian style Murano 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 I don't know Murano Murano you get the idea anyway um yeah i'm out of luck no it's just not here i'm not finding it I'm a bit miffed but anyway um i think i'm gonna stop now so yeah if you fell into the white fries 9099 hole of misery with me um where your brain just gets full of so much detailed rubbish that you're just going what the hell um yeah i'm sorry for that anyway um what am i going to say yes so all the references will be in the description below um all the details of the village antiques market in whedon will be in the description below please remember to like and subscribe Excitement is coming, Christmas is coming, I'm waiting for my presents, so I hope that you are too. I think I might get another film out before Christmas. But anyway, um, please remember to like and subscribe. Have a very nice Christmas. You will hear from me again, I think. But um, yeah, good night.